This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. It's time for Tuesday Terror here on the Mutual Audio Network. Be sure to leave the lights on while you listen. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. You are listening to Audio Drama in a Darker Shade at darkerprojects.com. And now our feature presentation. Darker Projects presents Tales from the Museum, a miniseries written by Charles Russell, starring Perry Whittle as Keith Nash. The regional museum's legendary Halloween party was finally upon us. The stern memo from Professor Pierpoint made it clear that all staff members were to attend in costume. This was the biggest event of the year for us museum folks, with all sorts of important people coming to eat and drink themselves into oblivion, after having bestowed gobs of money upon our beloved institution, of course. Having all the staff members on board was thought to loosen those purse strings a bit more. This year, though, tensions were a bit high for those of us who had been present in the Van Mont Theater earlier that week. I had only a vague memory of what had happened. I did know that Stein, Mancuso, Casey, and myself lost consciousness after a burst of psychic energy flooded the room. Mala Monroe's equipment confirmed that part. And I also remembered a warning from our ghostly friends Jane and Adrienne. The Reaver Guild, a cult dedicated to wiping out intruders from the spirit world, were interested in doing a cleanup job on the museum. And they had already set their plans in motion. This party might be the very moment they were waiting for to launch their final attack. Hey, Nash. Hey, yourself. <laughs> nice toga. Thanks. Want to hear my friends, Romans, and countrymen speech? I've been working on it all week. Uh, maybe later. Fair enough. Let's see. Rumpled trench coat, beat up Vendora, a noticeable bulge underneath your armpit. Classic private eye? Yep. Never goes out of style. Any signs of our Weaver friends? 
Not yet. I'm really hoping my run-in with Jane and Adrienne was just something brought on by a concussion. Sure. But it's a good thing you're packing, just in case. Boss? Boss, you there? We have a phantom of the Opera Smackdown going on in the Arboretum. Come again? Bill from maintenance and Tony from accounting are slugging out. It's like Rocky. Bill is, is done up like Lon Chaney. He, he looks really good. Tony and Andrew Lloyd Webber version. No Cloud Reigns or Herbert Moon? No, not yet. Let him finish it off. Word is that they both just got dumped by the same girl. Lois in the gift shop strikes again. Oh, and put ten dollars on Bill for me. Okay, out. Not even all the way dark outside yet. The festivities get started earlier every year. Oh, here you are. I want you to finally meet Larry. Larry, this is Keith Nash, our Special Services Coordinator, and Professor Stein, our Herpetologist. Gentlemen, this is a pleasure. Helene has told me a great deal about you both. Shall we be nervous? Oh, of course not. Oh, there's Pierpont. We'll be back, guys. I'm showing them off to everybody. So that's Larry the Proctologist. Gastroenterologist. Same basic thing. He's bigger than my Chevy. Helene told me that he played defense for University of Tennessee, and was still active in their sports programs. He makes more money than all three of us put together, you know. So I've heard. I uh, liked Helene's costume. Queen of the jungle. Suits her. Well, I'm going to go mingle. Later. Well, there you are, Mr. Nash. How are you? <laughs> Happy Halloween. Mala, I thought you couldn't make it this year. What? No. Please. I wouldn't think of missing a party here. Besides, I've just been dying to wear this gypsy outfit. Now, where's the cash bar? I'm right over there. Excellent. Let's get this party started. Oh, Angie, what are you... I know, Mr. Nash. Adrian told you we'd stay away tonight. We tried, we really did, but Aunt Mala had her heart set on being here. Have you ever tried to argue with my Aunt Mala? Not successfully. Is Adrienne in there as well? Right here, Chief. I'm never gonna get used to that. Well, you're here, so talk to me. What are you folks doing about the Reavers' plans? Most of the sentient and semi-sentient spirits are aware of what might happen tonight. They're keeping as low a profile as they can. Some, who are able, have moved out of the building. Most are staying put. Jane is here too, by the way. I was really hoping you ladies would stay out of the line of fire. If something were to happen to you, Angie would... Angie and I are both aware of the risks. We're just fickle adrenaline junkies, I guess. Can you sense them? The Reavers? Not so much them as those mother talismans some of them are carrying. There are several of them here, but I can't get a fix on them. Those talismans are very powerful, and actually cloak their movements. All right. Uh, see if you can meet up with Casey. Tell him that I said to get you a security radio. Your call sign will be Team X. Got it? Got it. And Adrienne, for whatever it's worth, thanks for being here. No problem. We owe you. Hey, boss. Bill took care of it. Uh, where do you want me to hook up with you and the professor with your winnings? I'm going to circle around the east side, make sure everything is quiet. Let's meet up in the main lobby in 30 minutes. Roger that. Over and out. Easiest route will be to cut across the main ballroom. <laughs> hey! Keep it quiet. That's a silenced pistol you feel in the small of your back. I strongly recommend that you cooperate. 
cooperate, are you? Look to your right. See those two men wearing blue robes? Those are real Uzi submachine guns they're holding. Signal from me and... Like I said, cooperate. Smart man. Into the elevator. So, are we Reavers? No. You know, the last time I saw red robes like yours, they were on a pack of freaks working for... Good evening, Mr. Nash. Argus? Well, this party just tanked. Has he been searched? Yes, sir. I have his radio and his sidearm. He's been handcuffed. Excellent. Won't you join us, Mr. Nash? So the people in red are yours. The people in blue robes are... Members of the Reavers Guild. My new associates seem to believe that your museum is haunted. Really? Follow me. I get my hands on you. Over there, old man. Ash, what's happening here? Are they the Reavers? Oh, I wish it were that easy. Good evening, Professor Stein. Argus! Can't you just stay dead? I know I'm probably going to hate any answer I get, but why is your snake club working with these Reaver fruitcakes? Mutual needs. Mutual need is often the coin of the realm in our world. Disparate entities can find themselves linked. May I introduce Madame Alexis Van Dyne? She leads the Reavers. It was a simple exchange. I needed specific medical treatment, and they needed manpower and logistical support. Madame Alexis is also a superb surgeon. Surgeon? Yes. When last we met, you left me to die of multiple snake bites. Be fair. You were trying to kill me first. Tell me, Nash, do you have any idea what happens to the human body following that many venomous snake bites? No idea. Professor? It depends on a great number of things. Age and health of the victim, number of actual bites, toxicity of the venom. Oh! You were right. They are irritating. Reports from the hooded ones, madam. Bombs two and three are in place. No resistance encountered. Very well. Activate the timers, proceed to the second floor, and set the charges there. Bombs? Charges? That's your plan? You're gonna blow up the museum? Of course not! We are holy warriors, not terrorists! We just need the others to arrive. Others? Of course, Mr. Nash. There are more players in our little drama, and each of you has a specific part to play in the festivities. Larry, I'm worried. About what? The party is in full swing, and I don't see Nash, Stein, or Casey. I'm afraid something might be up. You want to go check on them? Do you mind? No problem. I'll be at the buffet line. Just remember to leave a few scraps for everybody else. Yes, ma'am. We're probably hiding out in Nash's office. There. The charge is set. What? What the? What are you doing? Your Reavers! Hey, let's go! Base, come in. The timers are set. We've also captured a prisoner. 
Her name tag says her name is Mancuso. The archaeologist? She's on the list. Bring her to the rally point. List? Heading your way now. You know, you boys aren't very good at this, are you? What? Come back here, you. Let go of me! Hit me with a vase, huh? Karate kick my partner, huh? Time for me to teach you some manners. Dr. Mancuso, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Jane? They're running low on punch in the main gallery. Someone told me I have the keys to the liquor cabinet. The Stasna meter. You're... Oh, that's right. I'm a ghost. Hey, watch this. <laughs> are you all right, Dr. Mancuso? I'm fine. Would you mind putting your face back on? It's a little... Better? Much. Jane, why are you here? You know that... I'm helping to defend my home, Doctor. Oh. But more on that later. They're chasing Casey. He's managing to elude them, but... We have... One floor up. One of them has a Mather talisman. I can't get close enough to help. Right. How about this? You find Nash, tell him what's going on. He probably already knows, but... Anyway, I'll see what I can do to help Casey. Sound like a plan to you? It's all we have. I'll try to keep in touch. You can't miss him. He's dressed as a Klingon. Right. Okay, Helene. Time to woman up. To the firearms display. Oh, here we are. Just you and an antique rifle, which may or may not fire those bullets you found. Halls are dark, and the sounds of a party are filtering through the ventilation system. Mm, Very moody. Hmm, This is just like the time in the Yucatan when you had to hold off those grave robbers by yourself. Just a little different, though. (sighs) Time to be calm. Calm, cool, and totally in control. Freeze! Don't move! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Today is not a good day to die! Casey? Um, hi, Doc. Nice costume. Oh, and Jane says hi. Jane's here? Cool. Doc, uh, we have to find the boss. This is way too deep and I can't reach anyone on my radio. The blue robes are Reavers, but there are also some people wandering around in red robes who are working with the blue robes. They were setting bombs or something? Or something. Doc, I really hate to say this, but I heard one of the goons mention a name. And it's not a name you're going to like. Casey? I've never actually met the guy. I mean, he could be horribly misrepresented, but... Casey! Argus? Ah. Well, that would explain the red robes. Sorry, Doc. We need... We have to find the others and figure out what to do. But first, let's find you a lab coat or something. Uh, what? You're wearing a tiger stripe bathing suit and you are carrying a Mauser rifle. Truth be told, I dig it, but... <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Uh, Doc? I heard it, I heard it. Base, we have secured the targets. Meet you at the rendezvous point. All right, you two. Drop the hardware. Put up your hands and march. The rest of our reunion party has joined us. Dr. Helen Mancuso and Casey, isn't it? Casey? Yes, my niece mentioned you. Me? And that wasn't Doreen, was it? <sighs> no, it was Anna. Anna Van Dyne. Remember her? Oh, crap. 
I have something special planned for you. I'd really like to know. I'll summarize what they've been telling us. These fine people are planting a series of bombs in the main building. They're not explosives, per se. They're devices powered by those matter talismans, which will drive all spirit entities to this location, the fourth floor conference room. The museum is about to experience a stampede of displaced paranormal entities. That's a very condensed version. The outer ring of devices will discharge and form a solid barrier of ionized ethereal energy, which will encircle this building. Nothing which exists on the spiritual plane will be able to cross it. They'll be trapped inside, so to speak. The second and third tier devices, when fired in the correct sequence, will emit concentrated bursts of EM energy. This will drive the beast into a smaller and smaller control area, here. The entire process will take no more than five minutes. This one really likes to hear himself talk. Well, I'm waiting to hear what happens to, oh, people when these things go off. We're not entirely sure. This is new technology. My own theory is that a tsunami of displaced emotion-based energies will sweep through the building. Ghosts are basically beings composed of emotional energy after all. I'm sure there will be a few casualties. Casualties? In all wars, there are casualties. Collateral damages, if you will. And when exactly do you plan on... Soon. This is Miranda, our medium. You. Yes, tell me. Tell me about Volca. Who? Don't be foolish. I speak of the thing, the beast, the abomination, beneath our feet. The Devourer. Oh yeah, that. You're certain? Volca? Positive. It senses us. It's watching us now. It is plotting. Damien, signal the teams. Make haste. The time is near. You three, hurry with that salt circle. Yes, madam. Nash, are you seeing this? They're making a big salt ring, but it's not complete. There are sections missing. What's with that big quartz crystal in the middle? Oh, God, I hate it when my brain kicks in like this. The head lady said that the bombs would herd the spooks this way, right? I'm thinking they'll all be herded into that circle and then trapped in the crystal. Very good. You're not as dim as you appear. Look, lady, you need to know that the museum will- Will soon be purged of its infestation. Soon to be free of any and all spiritual entities, we will purify this edifice. That's nice, but the museum will move to defend itself. It's happened before. People have died. All the more reason to proceed. How does it feel, Nash, to know that you have failed? To know that you are doomed? To know that you and your friends are doomed? To know that I will outlive each of you? You know, Argus, no one even knew you existed until you revealed yourself. Since then, this team has faced things that make you look like a Girl Scout. We've faced werewolves. Nazis. Vampires. Zombies. Really bad cafeteria food. Nash has even had run-ins with a Grim Reaper and the Thing downstairs. And lived. Really? So, anytime you want to start it, just bring it on, punk. Oh, the bluster. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Nash, do you remember this? <gasps> yes. The Dambala Spear. It's what brought us together in the first place. Such a long, sharp point. It's a work of art, a work of killing art. The ceremony these Reavers wish to complete is a very arcane one. It's pagan. It requires a blood sacrifice, rather a lot of human blood. I was very happy to volunteer you and your friends. You don't mean... Casey, Madame Alexis insists you die first. Then you, Professor. Then the lovely Dr. Mancuso. Then after you've watched your friends die in agony, watched them be drained of their life's blood, then you, Nash. Lock them in that storage room. I want them to think about their fate for the rest of their lives. <laughs> Well, for the record, I really don't feel like dying tonight. Who's with me on that? Oh, me. Anyone got any ideas? Nash, what are you doing? Trying to get my hands to the keyring on my belt. Why? 
because I was a cop and a creature of habit. Almost. Aha. Uh -huh. A handcuff key. Don't leave home without it. Hold still a second. Thanks. Last time I was handcuffed was in Tijuana last year. Didn't like it then either. Don't ask. Thanks, boss. Yeah, I'm getting a little worried about my bloodless corpse being found wearing handcuffs in a toga. Stuff of nightmares. Anybody got a plan? Other than charging the bad guys and hoping one of us can get away and disarm one of those ghost bombs. No, not really. So, now what? That Damien guy. He said that the bombs would fire in sequence. Maybe if we can take out one or two of them. We have to do something. We're talking about Jane and Adrienne here. Casey, how fast can you run? Depends who's chasing me. Why? You got a plan? I'm thinking about that fire alarm lever next to the door. The door on the left wall. We run interference and Casey runs for the fire alarm. People start to evacuate when the alarm goes off. Police and fire authorities come running. Might throw these people off. I'm game. Doc, can you see where the bad guys are? This window is just nasty. Okay, I see them. Looks like all of them are kneeling around the salt circle. They're holding candles. The head lady Alexis is standing in the middle of the circle. Looks like she's chanting or something. I like this plan. I'm spoiling to mix it up. Okay, then. Ready? Now! Hey, there! Go, Casey, go! Huh? You, step away from that alarm. Commendable try, I must say. Madam Alexis, are we ready to begin? We are. Bring them, and let the blood of purification flow. <gasps> Damien, trigger the devices as we smite these infidels and purge this edifice of its infestation. Damien! I'm trying. Something is it. They should. Ahem. Hello? Hello? Is this thing on? Oh, Team X to Mr. Nash. Do you read? Mind if I answer that? Go for Nash. Mr. Nash, Jane just told Adrian about those bomb things. We found one of them. Adrian disarmed it, and Angie took it outside. She tossed it into the koi pond. Was that all right? Excellent. Do me a favor. Have Adrian and Jane pass the word. We're almost done here. Ten far. Over and out. Remind me to buy that dingbat a drink. It matters not. You still die. We can still make use of incantations to imprison some of them. Miranda, are you prepared for the final incantations? I suppose I am. Unfortunately for you. Miranda? She was ready to leave. The cancer was too far advanced. The last true reaver is no more. I don't... But you will. You allied yourself with my foes. You will face the same fate. What's happening? The light! Nish! Do you see? I see people in robes falling over. Make for the door. See how your candles burn brightly, but the darkness closes in. See the figures in the shadows. See how their eyes glow red. Here your jury has arrived. I'm not seeing any of this. Good. This isn't over. Yeah, it is. What just happened? No yells, no more wind, just... quiet. Yeah. Too quiet. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say that. Well, let's take a look. Do we have to? We have an empty conference room. No salt circle, no crystal. No iris, no reveres. They are no longer here. The old lady. Where are they? There were people in this room. Some things are better left unsaid. However, they shall never return to this existence. And you? 
that is of no concern to you. Be gone, and do not approach me again. Good enough for me. Let's get out of here. Has anyone noticed how often we end up doing this? In the employee lounge, passing around ice packs and aspirin, raiding the first aid kit? Shut up and pass me the peroxide. I sometimes wonder what a normal job would feel like. Speaking of normal, I've been meaning to ask, does Larry know what happens here? Only what I tell him. Larry is blissfully unaware. He's open-minded for a jock, but he doesn't see it. Cool. By the way, that dig in Albania, the one I'm going on next month, yeah, it's um, going to double as a honeymoon. Honeymoon? Did he? <laughs> Last night, I said yes. I'll wear the ring in tomorrow when I make the official announcement. Wow. One of us is doing something normal. Seems like a nice guy, too. Can you get me some playoff tickets? Actually, yes. <laughs> He's like a son to me. The brother I never had. I really look up to him. I have to. He's like four times my size. We're happy for you too, Dr. Mancuso. Jane? Volca has informed me that things will return to normal now. Volca wishes to spend the remaining time of existence in peace beneath the sub-basement. Volca really doesn't want any trouble. Another century or so and he'll fade out of existence. Fine by me. All of you should also know that we, the Unseen Residents, think of you as our protectors. Reluctant protectors, but protectors nonetheless. Dr. Mancuso, your Larry seems very nice. I'd better go find him before he cleans out the buffet line. Speaking of the buffet line, I promised I'd meet up with Angie and Adrienne. Jane, do you want to come? Love to. I just hope they're not out of crab dip. Now that's scary. Casey, Jane, Angie, and Adrienne all at the same table? Schizopalooza! This I gotta see. You coming, Nash? Right behind you. Hey, wait up a sec. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, if any of you are in here and can understand me, you're welcome. Hey, did you hear that? What? I could have sworn I just heard... Applause. Let's get back to the party. You've been listening to Tales from the Museum. Battle for the Museum. Written by Charles Russell. Featured in our cast were Perry Whittle as Keith Nash. Captain John Tatterzak as Professor Stein. Alistair Stewart as Casey. Amanda Fitzwater as Dr. Helene Mancuso. H. Keith Lyons as Larry. M. Sierra Garcia as Mama Monroe. April Sadowski as Angie, Adrienne. Rebecca Thrasher as Jane. Marley Norton. Audio Ilan as Miranda and Volka. John Specht as Damien. Chip Joel as Various Goons. And David Alt as Argus. The series is produced and directed by Ellie Hirschman. Post-production for this episode was by Michael Wilkinson. Original music by Joey Stuckey and Kevin McLeod. The executive producer for Darker Projects is Eric Busby. This has been a Darker Projects production. For more horror, science fiction, and other podcasts, please visit www.darkerprojects.com. Ludwig Born said... Losing an illusion makes you wiser than finding a truth. You're listening to Tuesday Terrors on the Mutual Audio Network. Tomorrow is our weekly anthology for science fiction and fantasy as Lothar Tuppen brings you Wednesday Wonders. Subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for every day of amazing audio 
or find the Wednesday Wonders feed in your favorite podcast player. And thank you for listening, everybody. This is the Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.